Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to say a big thanks to Terrapin for inviting me here to speak at this uh, prestigious event. It's a real honor for me and my company, especially to talk on such an important topic. I'm going to talk about what is probably the most significant challenge we face in our industry today. When not managed correctly, it exposes our people and the environment to significant risk and danger. And by recent estimates, is costing the industry more than $1 billion a day in lost potential production. The challenge I'm referring to is, of course, well integrity. I've been working in the field of well integrity for many years, as far back as the 80s, in fact, when I logged my first cement bond log in Libya. I was unwittingly making a small contribution to the integrity of the well. I say unwittingly because in those days, well integrity didn't have the significance it has today. Uh, logging cement evaluation logs was, was more of a formality. Since then, technology has moved on, and dare I say, we've all become wiser with age. The humble CBL has been superseded by ultrasonic scanning devices, which can reveal cement quality in more detail. And thankfully, these are also complemented by other measurements that can reveal actual flow in the annulus thereby enabling a focus on the quality of the seal as well as the quality of the cement. Cement slurries and cementing techniques have also evolved. Light cements, hybrid cements, and other flexible cements promise to deliver better zonal isolation. And gas-tight multi-stage cementing technologies help to ensure that these sealing, gauges, sealing agents reach the parts of the well that other sealing agents can't reach. These new technology advances are particularly relevant if we accept that the most significant threat to the integrity of a well is the primary external barrier. It's that external casing and annulus seal formed by the cement. What I'd like to do now is share some observations that support this view, but first I'd like you to take a step back and consider a broader view on well integrity. I think these pictures probably look familiar. As the events depicted here unfolded, the integrity of, the, of these vehicles was lost with tragic results. And there are many parallels we can draw and many lessons we can learn from these tragedies and apply them to our own industry. In all cases, individuals or teams had choices to make, technical choices, procurement choices, ethical choices. And in all cases, these teams were balancing profits against risk. During the Rogers Commission investigation into the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster, the esteemed petrophysicist Richard Feynman revealed the chief cause of the explosion was an underspecified elastomeric O-ring in the booster rockets, which failed to seal at the very low temperatures experienced on the day of the launch. A higher specification seal would have cost more money, and technically the launch could have been delayed, but NASA's budgets were under threat, and it was under pressure to launch, so the button was pushed. Lives were tragically lost, and NASA's reputation was in tatters. The sinking of the Titanic has been explored by several researchers and TV documentaries. It's known that like all major catastrophes, the sinking was caused by a compounding of several factors, both human and technical. The captain was running the ship far too fast for the conditions in an area that was known to be prone to icebergs. The lookout didn't have sufficient surveillance technology to see the iceberg in time. The ship didn't have enough lifeboats for the passengers on board. And from a design perspective, the ship didn't have adequate barriers in place in the event that the integrity of the hull was breached. The vertical bulkheads that traverse the length of the ship stopped short of the upper decks, and this meant that water was able to spill over the top of each barrier. If the bulkhead barriers had been adequately designed, the inflowing water would have been confined to the front compartments of the ship, and the ship would not have sunk. 
So I think these are all cases we can learn from and apply to our existing practices. I'd now like to turn to the sheer scale of the well integrity challenge that we face in our industry. A typical well is built from thousands of individual components and subsystems and is expected to perform in the harshest conditions. Not surprisingly, well systems can and do fail. But as we know, well failures can have dramatic consequences. At best, an underperforming well, and at worst, tragedy. Research shows that well integrity issues are costing the industry more than $1 billion per day in lost potential production, and that our global well infrastructure is only 80% efficient. This is clearly an undesirable situation for any industry, and it, and it doesn't have to be this way. Well integrity is a global challenge, not isolated to any one particular basin or region. Figures collected from three different independent sources show the percentage of wells with well integrity issues or well anomalies. In 2004, the Minerals Management Service conducted a survey and revealed that 45% of the wells in the Gulf of Mexico were suffering from sustained annulus pressure. And as most of you know, this is a prime indicator of a well integrity failure. In 2009, my own company hosted an SPE well integrity forum in Aberdeen. And during and asked the audience of approximately 100 delegates, we asked the question approximately what percentage of your wells have well integrity issues? And the average of this number that came back was 34%. In 2006, the study carried out by the Norwegian Petroleum Safety Authority, the Norwegian regulator, revealed that 18% of active wells in the Norwegian sector suffered from well integrity issues. And it further revealed that 7% of these wells were actually shut in. Historically, the Norwegian regulators have led the industry when it comes to well integrity and implementing well integrity standards. So perhaps this is the main reason why this region appears to be out outperforming the other regions. Even so, 18% of any well stock is still a large number. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there. In 2009, we commissioned a respected independent market research company to evaluate the scale of well integrity issues globally. As a result of its research and market models, the company concluded that almost 40% of global wells worldwide are affected in one way or another by well integrity issues. And as you can see, this figure correlates very well with the regional figures that we saw in the previous slide. Disturbingly, the company also revealed that half of the affected wells were operating under dispensation, and the other half were actually shut in. This is more than double the number from Norway but perhaps that is not unreasonable. This would mean that our global well stock is only 80% efficient. So that's 20% of wells that have been drilled, executed, uh, are, not, are not delivering a return on investment. This is a very sad state of affairs. If the shutting wells had been producing at the average production of the other producing wells, then this would have equated to an average production value of over a billion dollars a day. That's using 2010 barrel of oil equivalent figures. To put this number in perspective, this is more or less the entire EMP spend of the industry, excluding America in 2010, $365 billion. So in addition to the clear safety environmental case to increase our focus on well integrity, there is also an, a compelling economic case as well. Given the enormous scale of the problem, my colleagues and I were keen to understand what kind of failures and issues is the, what was the industry experiencing. So we asked our customers. I can share with you but by far the biggest well integrity issue relates to annulus integrity. It's that external primary, bar primary, primary barrier I referred to earlier. I'd now like to share some observations on how the industry is facing up to these challenges. 
As you'd expect, the technical community is doing its fair share of work when it comes to improving well integrity. And it's also clear from this data that the industry responds very quickly to critical issues. What you're looking at here is, is results of research I did. I, I basically searched the One Petro database, which stores all the technical papers produced by the industry. And I did a search for titles that contain the word integrity and also containing the words well integrity. Bearing in mind that any integrity related papers that did not contain those words will have been omitted from the data here. A total of almost 600 papers were, were developed. And of these, 150 specifically related to well integrity. The chart shows a clear uptick in paper contributions following Katrina and another uptick following Macondo. The two most frequent subjects of these papers relate to cement or annulus integrity, number one, and number two, well integrity management. However, a large proportion of the cement integrity related papers were concerned with special applications such as CO2 storage, HPHT wells, which means that there's still room for improvement. Nevertheless, it is comforting to know that the industry is indeed putting its energy into solving external barrier issues. The last observation I'd like to share with you is the growing size of our well integrity community. A search of over 300 professionals in the social networking site LinkedIn revealed over 300 professionals whose job title includes the words well integrity. Delving further into the SPE members database, you can see on the right here the vast array of, of well integrity related disciplines and functions which exist from very, very senior levels from well integrity director right through to shop floor levels in terms of well integrity engineer. So compelling challenges require compelling solutions. I'd now like to share with you some important technologies that can really make a difference in improving and maintaining well integrity. My company has developed a specialized array of well integrity solutions, helping to solve the industry's most significant well integrity challenges. But in the interest of time, I'd just like to spotlight two of these. I'm going to talk a little bit about CFlex and a little bit about Flowpoint. CFlex is a multi-stage cementing technology designed to help improve annulus integrity at the well construction stage. It does this by enabling better cement placement. It's also been qualified to the industry's highest integrity standards and it's highly reliable. It offers selective secure access to the annulus and can be locked permanently shut once the operation is complete. Demand for Seaflex is growing fast, especially in deep water and high cost regions such as uh, Gulf of Mexico, West Africa and Australia. Flowpoint uses ultrasound techniques to reveal flow behind pipe, so that's flow in the annulus where, of course, there should not be any flow. Cement bond logs evaluate the mechanical properties of cement, but can't reveal whether or not the cement is delivering a hydraulic seal. Flowpoint can. So by combining Flowpoint with conventional cement bond logging, it is possible now to evaluate cement and confirm whether or not the cement is sealing. As a result of positive uptake, Cflex and Flowpoint are helping operators globally to improve annulus integrity. Finally, I'd like to leave you with a closing thought. The purpose of well integrity according to the Norwegian regulator, Norsok, is stated here. It implies the concept of a well barrier in terms of reducing the risk of uncontrolled fluid release. I'd like to humbly propose an alternative definition which includes both a business imperative and a zero tolerance approach. 
This is the, the purpose of well integrity according to Archer. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a purpose that we all share in this room. It's the production of hydrocarbons safely and profitably without harming people or the environment. <coughs> I'd also like to emphasize that well integrity is not the sole responsibility of the well integrity director or the well integrity engineer. It is, of course, the responsibility of every one of us in this room, the entire industry. If we take this approach, then we can get closer to the ideal of producing hydrocarbons safely and profitably without harming people or the environment. Thank you. For me, as a non-technical expert, how would you define the word integrity? As we've been talking about this quite, quite extensively now, to the very basics. The, the, there's a technical definition and there's a philosophical definition and they're both very similar. You know, the technical definition relates to uh, the well barrier. It's the containment of fluids inside the well. Um, if that barrier in any way is breached, then the integrity of the well fails. Then, of course, nasty things can happen. As I said, you know, in the best case, you, your well will underperform. Worst case, you'll get more... more disastrous consequences. Uh, the philosophical definition uh, still applies. You know, it's, it's, it's doing things the right way. It's, it's doing things properly, it's following procedures, it's using the best technology, it's maintaining uh, the integrity of the approach in, in developing and designing wells and therefore impacting the, the physical integrity of the well. I think the other question which, which came up when I was listening to particular numbers you mentioned where you're saying that, you know, roughly, very rough approximation, about one third of the wells we're seeing have an in integrity issue of what, whatsoever. Um, where does this come from? Is this um, a lack of awareness, a lack of investment, or is it to a certain extent, a, 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 if you want to put it a little provocative, a calculated risk to the environment, at least uh, in the industry? I certainly don't believe it's a calculated risk. I honestly believe that the industry is, 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 is doing everything, it's ca everything it can. But of course, there's, in any industry, there's always room for improvement. You know, if we, if we translate that 80% uh, efficiency to the airline industry, and we, you know, the, the impact of 20% of aircraft falling out the sky, is, is not going to last I guess long. the other question is, what, how much more expensive does it get? You know, what, what's the bigger, either 20% efficiency loss or... I don't know, an increase in investment in your wells, yeah. I think the, you know, so just going back to the, the, the yeah. first part of your question, um, there are limits to the technologies available in the, in the industry and technology is advancing. So I think it's important to apply more, more recent and relevant technology to improve well integrity. Uh, a, a classic example is, is the substance which is used to seal the annulus. It's cement. You know, and cement has been used for 50 plus years, uh, ever since the industry began to actually seal cement into the formation. And, um, you know, clearly, if more than 40% of the wells in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, have sustained annulus pressure, then cement is not doing its job. So I think, you know, looking for improved substances, uh, for example, is important. Um, the balancing cost and risk, uh, you know, as I've shown with the data here, a billion dollars a day in lost potential production would, would, would more than pay for any additional effort and technology that needs to be applied to these wells. Um, but of course, the safety and environmental impact is, is orders of magnitude greater than that in terms of uh, increased value. Is there any question from the floor to Ken before we finish? There's one. Uh, yes, my question is related to uh, not the prevention that you mainly talked about, but the treatment. Uh, if there is, you know, a well integrity problem, as you said, that many of the wells uh, got shut down and some are under suspension. Uh, so, is there a way, you know, to, to contain uh, this, the problem of uh, well integrity or to, uh, to provide a remedy to it through technology? Yes, I, I think there's two, 
there's two approaches that can be taken and they, they need to be taken in parallel. The first approach is that uh, wells are designed and constructed from the outset with, with sustained well integrity in mind. That means applying best practices, it make, make, means validating that the well barriers are secure before the well is finally delivered and handed over to the production group. Um, of course, the majority of wells in the industry today have already been, been built. You know, there's only a few hundred can, being drilled as we speak now. So for existing wells, which have already had various processes applied, then the, the secret to success is, is effective diagnostics and effective remediation solutions. So diagnosing well integrity issues accurately and precisely, and then fixing them. Is, is key to resolving the issues with the shut-in wells and improving well integrity. Uh, what answer your question? I was actually more interested about the various technologies available now, you know, to, to recover uh, the damage done uh, by bad uh, well, well integrity. I think, you know, uh, probably if we look at the, the, the toolbox which exists in the industry, for uh, solving problems, that's probably the, 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 the weakest part of the toolbox is, is fixing the problems, preventing the problems and diagnosing them. I think we're, we have that fairly well under control, although that technology still needs to be adopted. Actually fixing problems, especially in the outer extremities of the well, is still a challenge. Good. If there are no more questions, I would like to thank you. Ken? Thank you. Thank you for your